Hello, my name is Jacqueline Pollock, and today we're going to talk about tuning a harp. Now, if you've just started playing the harp, tuning can be a bit intimidating. So for an example, I have here um, a very popular student model of harp. This is a Lion and Healy Troubadour lever harp, and we're going to tune it in the key of C. So for all musicians, tuning is a big topic. For some instruments, like the piano, you hire a professional piano tuner, and they come and tune your piano. Um, actually, you do the same thing for the organ. But for most instruments, the performer is responsible for tuning their own instrument. So if you attend an orchestra concert, you see the whole orchestra come out on stage and tune their instruments. The harp is quite similar. And the big difference is that we have a lot more strings than most instruments. So on the violin, the viola, the cello, the bass, you're only tuning four strings. And on the harp, you have to tune all of your strings individually. So it's just a little bit of a longer process. The basic idea behind tuning any string instrument is the same. All you're doing is you're adjusting the length of the string by a very small amount until it sounds good. So on the harp, the string comes up and it wraps around this tuning pin here. And when you're tuning, you're either just winding it up a tiny bit more to make the string a tiny bit shorter, or you're unwinding it by a small amount to make the string a little bit longer. So when we want to wind the string up a little bit more or a little bit less, we actually go around to the back side of the harp. So you can see that the tuning pin is all one piece. It goes straight through the wood over here. This is the back side of the same tuning pin. And to adjust it, we turn it over here. Now on a guitar or something you have, um, with the same tuning pin, you have a little peg coming off. So you can just grab onto that peg and that allows you to turn it easily. But if we were to put pegs on all of these pins, they would just run into each other. So instead we use a little tool to turn our pins called a tuning key. Here's a tuning key and you just attach it right onto the pin, and then that gives you the leverage, just like a wrench or something, to be able to turn it and wind it up a little bit more, or unwind it slightly. So you will need a tuning key in order to tune your harp. Sometimes they're also called a tuning wrench, and they can look a little bit different. The one that I was just using is a very standard T-shaped tuning key. Um, sometimes you also see them like this. This is an ergonomic tuning key, so it's just shaped a little bit differently. And this is kind of an old-fashioned one with the wooden bit here. Um, so harps generally come with a tuning key. If your harp doesn't come with a tuning key for some reason and you need to buy one, you should know that they're not actually universal. Different harp manufacturers use slightly different sized tuning pins on their harps. So you want to get one that goes specifically with your harp. And if you just go to the manufacturer's website, they'll tell you uh, what kind will work with their harp. So far, we've been talking about physically how to adjust the string, how to use your tuning key to wind it up a little bit more or a little bit less. But the big question then is how do you know when it's the right amount? How do you know when the string is in tune? And there's a fairly scientific answer for this. Sound, of course, is created through vibration. So if you play the string, it vibrates. That creates the sound. And we can actually measure those vibrations. Vibrations are measured in something called hertz. And the universal form of tuning used today says that there should be 440 hertz in this A, the A above middle C. So if everyone uses that universal tuning, then if you play an A on the harp, or an A on the flute, or an A on the violin, any instrument, then it will match. And you can actually do some complicated math and figure out what all of your other strings should be as well. If you go an octave up, you, um, you double the number of hertz, so this would be an 880 hertz A. And this one here would be half, so it'd be 220. And then you can go around and get to all the other strings. It gets actually um, a bit complicated. So and there's a simpler way to do it, which is that you can just use an electronic tuner. And the whole point of an electronic tuner is that it measures hertz. So now we're all set to begin tuning. We have, of course, our tuning key here. And then this is just a standard electronic tuner. Um, these actually are universal, so you do not need to get a harp-specific tuner or anything. You can just look for an electronic tuner, or sometimes also called a chromatic tuner. You can also get them um, as an app, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so that's all you need, just an electronic tuner. We'll go ahead and turn it on. Then you can see in the top right-hand corner here, oh, it's picking up my voice. <laughs> These things pick up all vibrations, not just the sound of the harp strings. It says um, 440 HZ for 440 hertz. And as we just discussed, that's the standard universal tuning. So you want to make sure that that's what it says and not something different. There are some alternate, less common tunings. And then on the left side, it's giving you a letter name. 
and then there's also this needle in the middle. So the letter name kind of gives you a broad distinction of whether your, your string is in the ballpark of where you want it to be, and then use the needle to refine it even further. So now we're all set to begin tuning. Um, here I've got my music stand with my electronic tuner on it, and then I like to keep my tuning key in my right hand so that I can play the strings with my left hand. And I also like to stand up when I'm tuning so that I can get a really good view of the whole harp. So generally I start with the middle C string. That's a little bit arbitrary, but I find that it works well. So I'm going to attach the tuning key to the tuning pin on the back side of the harp. This is part of the reason that I like to stand up is because then you can easily see where you're putting your tuning key. Then I'm going to go ahead and play the middle C string and see what the tuner has to say about it. So it is saying that it's a C, which is excellent. That means that we're in the ballpark of where we want to be. Next, we'll look at this needle that's swinging back and forth down here on the bottom. Now, ideally, you want the needle to be straight up and down vertically. That means that the string is exactly in tune. If it's a little bit to the left, that means that the string is slightly too low. And if it's a little bit to the right, that means that the string is slightly too high. So I'm going to go ahead and play the C again. And you can see that the needle is just a little bit over here to the right. So that means that the string is slightly too high. I have to unwind it a tiny bit. So I just turned the tuning key towards myself slightly, and now, oh, maybe you're living a little bit too much, and now <laughs> it's showing a nicely in tune C. So I'm realizing that this is a little bit difficult to show everything that's happening with my camera. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play the next few strings and keep the camera right here on the electronic tuner so you can see how all of that's working. And then after I've got those few strings in tune, I'll tune a few more and I'll bring the camera around so that you can see what my hand is doing with the tuning key. So here we go. We're going to keep moving down. The middle C is in tune. We're going to go ahead and tune the B below middle C. So it's showing as a B in the top left corner, which is great, but the needle is too far to the left, so we need to bring the string up a little bit more, wind it around slightly. string, so here comes the A. Oh, so the A looks pretty good. We don't need to make any adjustments there. Here's the G. The G is showing is slightly too high. The needle is over to the right, so I'm going to unwind it slightly, turn the tuning key back towards myself. And now the G is in tune. Let's do one more. Here's the F. So again, the F was slightly too high. I turned the tuning key back towards myself to unwind the string a little bit, and now the F is in tune. So now from this angle, you're going to be able to see how I'm turning the tuning key. We just finished the F, so now we're going to move down to the E string. I'm going to attach my tuning key to the peg, right like that. Then I'll play the string. It says that it's a little bit too low, so I need to turn the string toward the column, away from me. You just move it a very small bit. And now it's in tune. Probably one of the most common mistakes people make when they start tuning harps is they try to tune this turn they uh, excuse me, they try to turn the strings too much. So you just want to make very small adjustments. So here comes the D string. So I'll put my tuning key on the pin. a little bit too high so I turned it back towards myself just a small amount and now here's the C string so that one again was too high so I turned the tuning key back towards myself to unwind the string a tiny bit now we're going to go ahead and do a view where you can get more of a sense of everything that's going on so we just finished this C here we'll move down to the next string the B, I'll attach my tuning key. The tuner says it's a little bit too low, so I'm going to turn the tuning key away from myself. And there's that one in tune. Then we'll go on down to the A string. Again, that one was a little bit too low, so I started by turning the tuning key away from myself, 
but I kept overshooting, so I had to turn away, back away, back for that one. That happens sometimes. It's not a big deal as long as it's small amounts. Here comes the G. Again, too low. Turn the tuning key away from myself. is that I'm doing all the strings in order. I started on the middle C and I'm just going down, 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 down. And um, you can tune in whatever order you like, but one reason I like to do that is because then I can just keep moving my tuning key to the next pin, to the next pin, and so forth. I don't have to search around for um, where to put my tuning key. That E was just a tiny bit too high, so I turned the tuning key back towards myself. a little bit low and then for the very lowest string the C. That one's fairly low so you brought it up turn the tuning key away from yourself. So now that I've finished tuning all of the strings from middle C on down Next, I'm going to come back to the D of the middle C and start tuning here and do each string all the way up to the top of the harp. And I thought for these, instead of using my electronic tuner, I would use a tuning app because many people are actually using apps rather than a physical tuner. You can see that this is very similar to the tuner that I was using before. It's just a slightly different layout. Instead of being in the top left corner, the letter of the string is going to be here in the middle. And um, the needle now is going to be this curvy line up here. So we'll go ahead and start with the D above middle C. It says that it's a D, but rather than being right in the middle, it's lighting up a little bit to the right, so it's slightly too high. I'll turn the string back towards myself. And now it's in tune. Let's try the E. So the E is a little bit too low, it's lighting up on the left side. There we go, I went just over and then I came back to the middle. And here's the F. Very good. So now I'm just going to keep tuning each string from here on up to the top of the harp. Remembering that if the string is too high, you want to make it a little bit lower so you turn the tuning key back towards yourself. And if the string is too low, you wind it up a little bit more so you turn the tuning key away from yourself. There we go, so now it's all set. Um, so most of the strings going on up were a little bit too low, so I had to turn away from myself to make them a little bit higher. And especially as the strings get very small up here, it's really easy to overshoot, to turn a little bit too much one way or the other, and to just have to come back around. One thing that I didn't talk about very much is what to do if your harp is really, really out of tune. Before I tuned this one, this one was not that far off. It was fairly close, so mainly I was just making minor adjustments. But if you have a harp that's really out of tune, then a lot of times when you play your string, the letter that shows up on the tuner will not be the letter that you want. So then the first thing you have to do is you have to get it kind of in the ballpark. So let's say that you played this G string and your tuner said that it was an F. That would mean that the string is way too low, that it's actually this F instead of this G. And you have to bring the string up quite a bit to make it a G and then get your needle in the middle. And of course, if you played this string and it said it was an A, that would mean that it's way too high. So you have to lower the string until it becomes a G and then do your fine tuning and get the, the needle right in the middle. There's also sharps and flats, which are just in between notes. So you could play this G and your tuner might say that it's a G flat, which would be a little bit too low. Flats are low. So you'd have to bring it up to a regular G and then get your needle in the middle. Or you could play the G and it might say that it's a G sharp sharps are high so you'd have to bring your string down a little bit until it became a regular G and then get your needle in the middle. Just a couple of final thoughts. One, especially if you're new to playing the harp and new to tuning the harp, 
it's much easier to keep a harp nicely in tune by tuning it regularly than to just tune it once in a while and have to make huge adjustments to the harp. So I think most beginning harp students should try and tune their harp uh, one or two times a week, just aiming to make small adjustments and keep everything really nicely in tune. Secondly, tuning is a skill, so that means that it gets better the more that you do it. And some people find it a little bit discouraging, especially because there's so many strings it might take a little while. But of course, the more that you do it, the easier it becomes and you get a lot more efficient at it as well. So, good luck to you in your tuning.